In this digital world, there are thousands of apps available across the App Store and the Google Play Store, and some of them are absolutely terrible. And I wanna create a video series, hopefully each month, to try and show you which apps are worth downloading, even if they have some small ads and even a subscription, because this is the world we live in at the moment. This is monetization as we speak. And I wanna show which ones are actually worth keeping and ones to kind of avoid. But we're gonna specialize in definitely the ones that you should be keeping. And if you can't tell by the background, the thumbnail or the title today, we're gonna to be talking about the language app Duolingo. Let's go. Duolingo is not new to the application world. This app has been on the block for a very long time with millions of users tuning in every day to do their streak to learn a language of their choice. And there's loads of languages on there, even really difficult ones and ones you wouldn't expect to try and learn, especially being an English speaker, learning a new language is quite difficult and this application has helped me in the past. And Duolingo has a massive community online. They have a mascot that you'll recognize. He's also known for his quite threatening ways of getting you to log on every day. It does get you onto the application completing your daily activities to complete your streak, which is one big thing that Duolingo has. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly why you should download Duolingo. Now, if you don't want to learn a speaking language, Duolingo actually offer for you to learn the world of music by learning the different notes and keys from the piano to actually improving your maths. If you want to get more quicker at adding sums and doing maths questions, Duolingo actually offer this as well. And I think this is a great addition to the application because it proves that every language doesn't have to be one spoken by a country. It's an app that's definitely worth your time. It has daily challenges which of course go towards your streak. Streak motivates you to, you know, get on the application and learn something every day. And I find this an absolute challenge to get Duolingo into my daily routine to make sure I don't miss it. They do offer what we call a streak freeze, which essentially gives you a day off, but Sometimes it is it really worth the risk when you know you've got a big streak. And I know someone who's got over 3,000 days on Duolingo and they take it very seriously. Now, as I mentioned, I've just finished 365 days on a free plan. They do sometimes chuck in a free subscription every once in a while, but I don't pay for the subscription and I think it's absolutely brilliant. I've had this app, I've logged on every day and it doesn't feel like a chore. The way they do throw ads at you is after you've done your first lesson, if you're not a subscriber to the subscription, they chuck a random ad in there. If you are doing what I do and log on every day to do the one lesson, I just close it once the ad appears and open the application to check I got the flame. But that is sort of the balance between, you know, logging on, doing my challenge, and then just leaving the application. I don't feel like I've waited around. I'm not wasting my time. The lessons in Duolingo vary between what you actually get. I like the stories, which you go through and learn a language via a story by listening to speakers. There are speaking challenges, reading challenges, matching challenges, and then when you reach the end of a section, there's a quiz to see if you can move on to the next section. And I absolutely love this part because there's a lot in a section and you learn a lot. And then when you come to the end and practice it out, it really does show what you've learned over the last week or two weeks, however aggressive or passive you wanna be with going through this course. Duolingo has an absolutely amazing community, but one thing that we can talk about is their mascot. When you see him on social media, you know exactly who he is and what he's out to do. He's a bird that wants to teach you to learn languages. He's been in the promos for the conferences. He has become a bit of a TikTok sensation. And I know out there that users who use Duolingo have actually had Duolingo themed parties with that bird appearing. And it just shows that their branding is absolutely brilliant and it's something to keep an eye on. I do absolutely love their social media team. I think they really do well with their TikTok and Instagram account to really, you know, bring the users into the world of Duolingo. The customization options in Duolingo are quite small, but it's nice to have a personal touch. You can create a character that looks very similar to you. I've got mine with blonde hair and blue eyes. That's the most you can get out of the detail in comparison to like Bitmoji, but it's enough that my friends can go, oh yeah, that's Kyle and he's finished his Spanish lesson today. Uh, these characters come up when you level up or do quests with friends. The app icon has some customizations as well. If you do reach a 30 day streak, you can actually have a special streak icon, which I think is absolutely awesome. And if you're a subscriber, you have access to premium ones as well. 
One thing that really does get me feeling like the community with my friends is the monthly challenges and you and a friend can work together to unlock extra gems. There's also a monthly challenge that you can do that can earn you a little icon to say I did the monthly challenge. This one in October is got a little ghost because of course it's Halloween, which I think is really nice. The design does make it feel like they're always updating over the year. Now Duolingo is absolutely fantastic, but it wouldn't be a review without one downside. And this downside's kind of like a minor, but can have major implications. And there's a bit of a language barrier between different languages around the world. I'm from the UK and I wanted to learn Spanish because we live near Europe and we've got the Canary Islands and Ibiza that all speak Espanol. And it's just something I've wanted to do. And doing Duolingo, I've learned so much, but I've also learned that I've been learning Mexican Spanish mainly because Duolingo is based in the US and they've obviously gone for what's close to home. Uh, there's just a few words like the way they describe cars and things like that that are a little bit different that I've learned from learning Spanish and then speaking in Spain and learning actually I'm not speaking the right Spanish. But it still is, but it's not. It's like the same way us English and the Americans describe paths and sidewalks a little bit different. So there's just that element that I just think maybe in the future they could separate them, make European Spanish and US Spanish or Mexican, whatever it's classed as. It's just one of those things that I just think can impact your learning minor but when you start speaking it to people they will start correcting you. I don't know if that's the same with French because of course Canada having a French language as well and maybe Portuguese with Brazil and Portugal. It'll be interesting to see if it does have a global effect. I didn't think that sentence was going to work but it did um, but that's my only one downside. The world of Duolingo is looking very bright. I think the future for this application is gonna go way further than what it is now, especially after implemented music and maths. These were a very good change to the application to allow people to learn just on the platform. I think computer science, HTML, coding, JavaScript, all the other languages that aren't you know, spoken by a country are definitely something that they could implement. If not that, you could also implement things like this, videography, photography, making podcasts, skills that you have to learn a lot and repeat to, to sort of practice, I think actually could be implemented. Like if it was photography, you could do a shutter speed and have different icons that are blurred, like a matching game. There's options that this company could do to just make this an absolutely brilliant learning platform. There's a lot that it's kind of aimed at kids, but when you're learning something new, I find that you do need it to be super basic, especially with the languages. I found this with the maths. I've learned loads of different things with the maths that you know I wouldn't do my way, and we're also used to using calculators now. It's a great learning platform. Duolingo has many subscriptions that you can subscribe to to enhance your learning, but that is exactly what it is. It's to enhance your learning. It allows you not to run out of lives, which are a bit scary when you're learning a new challenge and it also does remove the ads and I know a lot of people that take Duolingo very serious have got the subscription they also do a family plan to really make your money go further so I'm a big fan of the subscription but the fact you don't need it to enjoy the application is why it is up here in my list of approved applications which brings me to the section where I'm going to give it the snap this stamp of approval to basically say to you guys if you want to learn a language this is an application that you can trust and will Will enjoy and I wanted to do this type of series because there's so many apps on my phone that I think are game changers there's some that just tell you times and dates that are just useful but apps that give you skills are definitely ones that we should recognize and promote around so I was gonna make a series a bit like app of the month but sometimes you can get months where there just hasn't been anything you know created and I think it would real really kill off the series so I'm gonna try and do this but uh, I can't promote monthly because it's just not gonna be a thing I don't think but I will make sure whenever an app comes on the scene and I think actually this is definitely I want to tell my audience about I will bring it to you guys I hope you've enjoyed today's video of a review of Duolingo and of course if you're new around here you can subscribe to the channel and leave us a like to let us know what you thought of it and comments down below even put them in Spanish French and Italian show us your languages you've learned on Duolingo to, to flex those skills because that is one thing you can do once you start learning another language but thank you so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll catch you in another video